All right, this is a second example involving one sample or one mean, uh, but it's a little bit different in that uh, we're not going to be able to do a z-test. We're going to actually do a t-test. So um, I'll, I'll show you why that is um, as we go through it. But uh, we can go ahead and read the question. The PTA is concerned about students who graduated from the local high school. They think that graduates do not score as well in math on average as students from other high schools in the area. The principal randomly selected 15 students from the graduating class and administered a standardized math test. The mean score on the test is 98. That suggests that that's the population mean. The scores from the 15 students are as follows, and they're given here. And then the question is, are the students graduating from the local high school scoring differently than other students in the area? So I've gone ahead and laid out a hypothesis test. I've laid out the six steps. And of course, we start with stating and checking assumptions. We have assumptions about, <clears throat> to start with, the population. Is it normally distributed? And frankly, I don't know if scores in this math test are normally distributed. Do we have a large enough n? Yes, we do. So that the central limit theorem now comes into play and that the sampling distribution will be normally distributed. Population standard deviation is something also I don't know. We have no information up here about the population standard deviation. Sigma. We're given mu, 98. We're given the scores of a sample, but we're not told what the population standard deviation is. Back to our assumptions, our level of measurement is we're assuming is going to be interval or ratio. These are test scores. In our sample, we certainly hope that we have a random sample. <clears throat> now, these are our, uh, our three assumption classes. Our null and alternative hypothesis is the, uh, the second step. Our null hypothesis is going to be about a specific population parameter. In this case, it's about mu. And we think that the null hypothesis usually means no difference, no change, no effect. <clears throat> so if the students were the same as all the other students, their mean scores would be 98. If they were different, it would be not equal to 98. So that's our null and alternative. If they were scoring differently, our alternative hypothesis is, uh, is that. <clears throat> Mu is not equal to 98. So now we go to the third step, which is to choose a sampling distribution. We have one mean here, but sigma is not known. <clears throat> now in previous cases, I'll change that to is not known. In previous cases, we've been using the z test, or the, 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 uh, we've been using a Z statistic for uh, this particular test. And here's my fancy uh, math type um, equation generator. And you can see that uh, we have the mean minus the uh, uh, population mean divided by the standard error of the mean. The standard error of the mean, we do not have. We do not have the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean. We have the sample mean, we have the population mean, but we don't have the standard error of the mean. We're not given the standard error of the mean. <clears throat> um, so, if you'll recall, <clears throat> the standard error of the mean, or sigma sub m, and I'm just going to type it in here, sigma sub m is equal to the standard deviation <clears throat> of the population, sigma sub x, or in this case I'll just, I'll just use sigma, divided by the square root of n. Now we do not have sigma, so we cannot calculate sigma sub m. But what we do have is sample standard deviation. Can we use that? And the answer is sure, we can use that. However, if we use s, this is no longer sigma but S sub M. It's the estimated standard error because we know the sample standard deviation is not exactly equal to the population standard deviation. We also have to adjust this formula, but this formula now is no longer distributed. These values are no longer distributed as a Z, but as a T statistic. So this is the new statistic that we're going to be working with, is the T statistic. So what I wrote down here is we're going to be doing a T test for one sample, and it has certain consequences. We'll talk about those in a minute. Step four, we set our significance level. Alpha is 0.05, and our, our rejection rule, which is or our decision rule, which is p is less than 0.05, we reject the null and accept the alternative. 
Now, to do the computations, they're easiest to do in Excel. So, I'm going to move forward here and show you what I've done in Excel. What I've got is I've got the math scores. We're going to need the, po the sample mean, right? We're going to need the population mean. We're going to need the standard error of the mean or the estimated standard error of the mean, which we're going to get from the population standard deviation. And we're going to need n, but that's just the number of scores. That's pretty easy to generate. So I have the sample mean, sample standard deviation, S sub m, mu, which we know is going to be 98 in this case. And then we'll calculate the t. So mean is just given with the function average. I'll just type in average, select the scores. This will calculate sample mean. Sample standard deviation, <coughs> standiv.s, standiv.s. Come on, get it. At, there we go. If I just select those numbers, that'll give me the sample standard deviation. And then S sub m is the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of scores. So it's just going to be this value divided by the square root of 15. We have 15 scores. That's the standard error of the mean. Now we can go ahead and compute our t, which is going to, going to, just going to be the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error of the mean or how many standard deviations the mean is from the the sample mean is from the population mean. Now from here we want to determine or we want to uh, be able to comp compute the p value. But it turns out that the, we need to calculate a, a last uh, another term we call degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom are basically the number of number of components in a statistics calculation that are free to vary. In this case in this t-test, it's n minus 1, or the number of observations minus 1. I'll describe this a little bit later. It's 15 minus 1, or 14. In order to get the p-value, I'm going to use the t.dist.rt function. And that will give me the right tail of the distribution. So I want this as the t-value. I want this as the degrees of freedom. I'm going to have to go change that to a, to a comma and return the value of, this is our p-value, 0.00123. So, <clears throat> that's our p-value. If we go back to the hypothesis test, and we go back to the hypothesis test over here, we can put in our p-value is equal to 0.001. And then if we want to draw a conclusion, right, we refer to our our uh, decision rule, and since since I'm going to spell this, since our p is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative. And what we conclude is that the students at the local high school are scoring differently than their peers and in fact they're scoring significantly higher. So that is the result of our hypothesis test one sample <coughs> when sigma is not known or one sample t. Now there's another way to do this and I put a tutorial on a line about add-ins so let me go ahead and just find the add-ins here. Um, I'm going to add that. I'm going to expand this a little bit to show the developer tab. But th all these computations can be accomplished very quickly with a few clicks of a button because they um, that's the way it is. So if I go to add-ins here and we make sure that we have the LFD3 add-in in there, we can use the tool of the LFD3 add-ins. And if we select this and select single sample T, it comes up with this wizard. We select our data. <clears throat> we type in um, our hypothesized mean, which is 98. We're doing a directional or one-tail test, and I'm going to put the output on this page right around there or so. What the heck, it doesn't really matter where it goes. And then when I click OK, you can see that it performs 
a single sample t-test for me. Um, if you note, you'll see that the values that we computed, the mean, the variance, the, well we didn't compute variance, but the standard deviation, SEM, there's the standard deviation is the same, the standard error of the mean is the same, the degrees of freedom are the same, and the T is the same, and the P is the same. So just a really easy way to compute uh, these sorts of statistics using uh, the add-ins. That's it.